Well, Steve here, Roadworthy Rescues. We are back on the Land Cruiser BJ60. Uh, it's actually later, the same day here after getting it home, I rolled it off the trailer, aired up the tires a bit more and shoved it into the garage. Now, I'm going to go ahead and just yank this engine out of here uh, so I can set the hood back on and then I can uh, mess with it here in the corner of the garage when I get uh, some spare time. And then we'll uh, finish this video in, uh, with firing up, hopefully, of this motor if it's not frozen. I'll, uh, I'm definitely going to pull some at least glow plugs and run some ATF or Marvel Mr. Royal or something down there before I even try to crank it over. And uh, yeah, we're hoping for the best on this one. about the easiest engine removal I've ever done. Now I can get a bit of a closer look at it. It is 12 volt. We got the Edict motor still intact, so that's good. The wiring, uh, flywheel missing, but uh, I did, I believe, see at least a clutch in the vehicle, so hopefully the flywheel's there. Old, old school fuel filter on here. Probably never been changed. Uh, we got a busted fan, but that's okay. I have several of those. Lots of uh, foliage on this side, and the uh, oil filter is actually dented and dripping and leaking now. Probably because I, uh, from driving it down the road, you know, bouncing over things. There we go. Dripping right into the oil jug. Perfect. Yeah, so I think it was probably laying this side up, out in the sun, buried in needles and snow and rain. So, you know, as long as this exhaust was angled down and the water didn't go up that way, you know, maybe, maybe it's fine. Oil pan, other than a little dent, looks fairly good. I've definitely seen those rusted through before. Okay, so it does have the factory power steering, which if this pump is good, those are like unobtainium. Uh, I'm sure that belt's still good. Yeah, injection pumps here. All Everything's in here, everything's together. So I have high hopes for that. Uh, yeah, steering box is still on it. Power steering factory, very desirable. You know, even these motor mounts are good. Those are hard to find. Yeah, now maybe I'll uh, I'll get it up in the air since it's in the shop and inspect the underside a little better. Okay, well, let's take our first look underneath the rig. Mainly just undercoating and surface rust flaking off up front here. This is an H55 five speed, which is awesome. We still got the uh, factory style exhaust that goes up and over here. <laughs> oh yeah, see the rot goes all the way up about halfway. But at this point here, I mean, you can still cut this out and plate it on the inside. I've done that before, but over here you see someone's added some metal underneath into this bracket. This is new metal here, probably ripped off. And they just did this to, to get her back on the road, but yeah, all the way back. And then of course the other side of the frame's rotten there too. This side 
Um, it hasn't been repaired yet. It's actually in a little bit better shape. I mean, can can be fixed. You know, cut out all the bad stuff, weld in some new stuff, even this. I mean, I know. I've done it. So you got some decent looking shocks on here. <laughs> they still have the wire on them. That's hilarious. Guys, you're supposed to take that wire off when you install your shocks. That's funny. <laughs> okay. Leaf springs, I mean, they're not broken. They're uh, fairly sagged out. We got a fuel tank. Sounds like there's something in it. Back here. Yeah, fairly rotten. But, I, you know, it's actually better than I expected to tell you the truth. Uh, I don't know why the drive shaft disconnected. They were probably working on removing this. Hopefully the front drive shaft's in it. Those are hard to come by too. Uh, yeah, you, you see some more of that diamond plating they put on here to secure this leaf spring bracket. Oh yeah, I give that a 7 out of 10 for red neckery. Get her done. Get her back on the road. Oh, just a little exhaust leak there. The rest of it's missing. Great. But hey, look at the rockers. I mean, besides being dented there, completely solid. I, uh, that's unheard of. What's the other one look like? Wow, even the inside. This is amazing. Yeah, we got this one corner of rust right there. I, I got to save this body. I got to see if I can get paperwork for this thing. Yep. Good score for uh, what we paid for it. I'll tell you that. Even back here, look, just, just barely getting the rust. Uh-huh. Right on. Okay, guys, well, we will carry on this video with working on the motor. And uh, that may not happen today well it definitely won't happen today but we'll uh we'll get her done we'll, we'll keep you entertained hey guys well it is uh, a couple days since i picked this thing up and i think it's time we see if it's stuck or not uh, all i've done is spray a little wd-40 on a couple things here glow plugs and the injectors uh like to start by trying to pull the inject or glow plugs maybe that's how long through the winter and the rain oh there we go oh yeah <laughs> look at that it's definitely got some crud in here I'm glad i didn't work that throttle i'll have to uh Get the vacuum in there and suck as much of that out as I can. That's not really a good sign. Uh, okay. Next we'll pull the glow plugs out. into these first couple cylinders. That is a really good sign. It moved.
Pretty sure we're going all the way around. All right. That is wonderful news. Well, I guess I'm going to have to go rob a bell housing off of something so we can crank this thing over and put a flywheel on it. So. Well, I got to thinking, the uh, best place for this motor, seeing as it does spin over so nicely, is back in the cruiser. Uh, and also, I don't have an extra bell housing uh, to fire this up on the garage floor. I sold the one I had, so yeah, I went ahead and ordered up a new crankshaft seal, rear main seal, slapped that on, got the clutch back on there. Um, New fuel filter, new oil filter, primed everything up, and she's ready to go back in. So, without further ado here, I think I'm going to fire up a bit of a time lapse. We'll stuff her in there with a couple bolts, and we'll put some power to it, see what happens. And maybe we'll go for a rip. steering and filled that up. Some fresh oil in it. And, uh, just cranked her over here a little bit to uh, bleed the air out of the injectors. And this is about to be the first startup here. Uh, I feel really good about this, the way it was cranking over and uh, how quickly I was getting bubbles out of the uh, injectors up here. So I'm going to hit the glow plugs. seconds is probably good and let's hit it <laughs> Didn't even smoke that much, so I call that a huge win. I think we scored big time on this sucker. Um, I suppose now I ought to actually hook everything up. Probably throw a radiator in it and some cooling and some drive shafts and see if it'll move under its own power. Not that I have any doubts, but it sure be nice to be able to drive it around the yard instead of push it. So I'm going to do all that stuff and then we'll bring you on back in here. All right, it's time to see if this old girl will move under its own power for the first time in at least, at least 15 years, probably more. Right, well, you guys remember when I had it running there 
and uh, it was revving up all on its own, kind of like it wanted to run away. Well, this is why. This here is the little vacuum diaphragm on the injection pump. Normally, you know, you see these with a little tear in them. This is actually just made out of leather. Uh, you know, and they'll run funny, they'll smoke or whatever, but this, this one was completely separated. So there's my problem. Um, I do have another one here that I took out of another cruiser just to replace for good measure. It's still fine. So we're going to throw this in. It's a bit of a pain to do with the injection pump installed. You got to pull this little cover off the back and, you know, fight in there with little... Yeah, it's, it's a pain. Anyway, that's what's wrong. I am going to fix that and then we're going for a drive. We got a radiator in it. We got it full of water for now just to see where it's going to leak. I uh, got fuel in it, hooked up the fuel lines, drive shafts are in, put the clutch slave on and clean that up a bit. Hopefully it works. We're going to see if she starts. And the glow plug relay and all that's going to work under its own deal with just the keys. Wish me luck. I guess that's the return coming back from the uh, vacuum pump on the back of the alternator. So we'll fix that and then maybe we'll hit the road.
Well, that's about going to wrap this one up, guys. Gave her a quick bath with the uh, pressure washer. Got that lichen and moss off of there. Did take it for a quick boot down the road. Uh, she ran quite well, though uh, these tires are these tires are really bad. I'm gonna have to change them out before going any real distance. Um, but yeah, she cleaned up pretty good. Still needs a good interior detailing, and might uh, hammer out this fender or swap it out for another one I've got at some point. And do a bumper but for now this is how she's gonna sit as I have other things on the go so yeah let me know what you think of this one guys I know I've done a few of these Land Cruisers on the channel but they just keep finding me and I have parts for them so it makes it easy but uh, next week I believe Tuesday we're going to get that Camaro uh, from the same place I bought this one me and my dad and we're gonna try and get it running right where it is cut the trees down around it Driver on home. We'll see what happens. So uh, make sure to be watching for that one. Uh, subscribe. Hit that like button and hit that bell if you don't want to miss the next video. See you guys.